Hello and welcome to episode number 253 of WITM. Andrew in the main events will be in action for the first time since capturing the WWE Cruiserweight Championship for the fourth time, defeating Lince Dorado at No Mercy. But before that, Andrew is in the ring, microphone in hand. Let's hear what he has to say. Andrew speaks. I've got to say, it feels great to once again stand in this ring as your WWE Cruiserweight Champion. But first, I want to congratulate the former champion, Lince Dorado, on an outstanding reign. As I've promised, big things are happening for 205 Live, and I'm proud and excited to lead the way as both the 205 Live General Manager as well as your cruiser as well as your cruiserweight champion now The chairman of the board, Vince McMahon, has made his way to the ring. You know, whenever the chairman of the board makes a rare appearance on WWE programming, that something major is about to happen. Let's hear what the chairman of the board, Vince McMahon, has to say. Andrew. I wanted to come down here and personally offer my congratulations to you. Because, unbeknownst to even you, you have made history yet again. For the first time ever, you will go down in history as the only man to be the final champion for three separate retired championships in the WWE. The ECW World Heavyweight Championship, the ECW Cruiserweight Championship, and now the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. See, because tonight's edition of 205 Live will be the final edition of 205 Live. I know, Andrew, that 205 Live and this division has meant a lot to you. I want you to take this as good news. I've spoken to both Kurt Angle on Raw and Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan on SmackDown. And backstage, I have contracts to each of those brands waiting for your signature. And I promise you, you will be inserted right back into the main event picture wherever you choose to go. So... If you would just hand over that Cruiserweight Championship and come meet me backstage, we'll work on getting you immediately assigned to either Raw or SmackDown.
Andrew responds. Or, that's Vince McMahon speaking. Now Andrew responds. With all due respect, Vince, I'm not going anywhere. And I'm not giving up this Cruiserweight Championship either. I didn't stop fighting for the Cruiserweight Division when he shut down ECW. And I'm not going to stop now. Vince responds. Well, Andrew, if that's how you feel, then it pains me deeply to do this. But, Andrew, you're fine. Behold the king. The king of kings. Triple H, the COO of WWE, has made his way to the ring and speaks to Vince and Andrew. Andrew, you head backstage with that Cruiserweight Championship and get ready for your match with Neville tonight. I'll handle Vince. Vince, what the HE double hockey sticks do you think you're doing? 205 Live is my territory, and that man you just tried to fire has been working hard to increase the ratings by bringing in names such as Hajiri and Enzo Amore. Vince responds. Hunter, listen. I'm not the bad guy here. Don't you dare blame me for this. If you want someone to blame, blame the WWE Universe. It turns out they don't want to see cruiserweights. What they want to see is powerhouses like John Cena, Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, and Brock Lesnar. I mean, really, ask yourself, Hunter. With the exception of Andrew, do you really think you can look at any of these cruiserweights and honestly think to yourself, that man can main event WrestleMania? Triple H responds. Well, how would I know? You would never give them that chance. And since when do you have a clue about what the WWE Universe wants? For the most part, you've been out of touch with the WWE Universe for the last 20 years and counting now. The truth is, the WWE has never been about what the WWE Universe wants. It's always been about one thing, and one thing only. 
and that is what Vincent Kennedy McMahon wants. It always has. You have superstars who have the support of the WWE Universe, and then they're lucky to even be on the card. And then you have other talents who get booed practically out of the building, and you try to force feed and position them as the face of this company. You don't have the first idea on what's best for this business. Vince responds, or, yeah, Vince responds, or no, that's Andrew, I'll get this right eventually. Now Vince responds, and you do, huh? I suppose you can take this waste of money, time, and resources called 205 Live and turn it into a ratings juggernaut, right? I'll tell you what. You, th you think you can do this better than I can? You think you really understand what's, how do you put it, best for business? Here's your chance, big shot. Myself and the respective COOs of and GMs of Raw and SmackDown will handle those brands. Stephanie and William Regal will handle NXT. And 205 Live is all yours. If you can substantially increase the ratings on 205 Live in a reasonable amount of time, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Complete control of everything WWE. Never again will any decision of yours be questioned in the WWE. But if you should fail, you can bet... I'll be right over your shoulder with every move that you make. You won't even be able to take a step backstage without my approval. Have I made myself clear? Triple H responds, crystal clear. Behold the king, the king of kings. On your knees, dog. Alright, so that's a huge, huge development on 205 Live. Vince McMahon makes his way to the ring. Attempts to cancel 205 Live. Attempts to strip Andrew of his WWE Cruiserweight Championship, or at least have Andrew go down in the history books as the final WWE Cruiserweight Champion and immediately sign with Raw or SmackDown Live. Triple H makes his way down to the ring. Claims that Vince McMahon has been out of touch with the WWE Universe now for 20 years and does not have an idea on what is best for business. Vince says, you think you can do th this better than me? Here's your opportunity. If you can substantially increase the ratings on 205 Live, then 205 Live will remain, and not only that, you will gain 
complete control of the WWE. Your word will be the final word and will not be questioned again in the WWE. So that effectively means Vince also said that he, along with their COOs, Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon and the GMs, Kurt Angle on Raw, Daniel Bryan on SmackDown, will take over control of Raw and SmackDown. NXT will remain run by William Regal, as well as now Stephanie McMahon. And Triple H will be handling 205 Live. That does mean that Andrew will no longer be recognized as a 205 Live general manager. He will focus solely on being the Cruiserweight champion and helping do his part to keep 205 Live around. He starts that off tonight in the main event taking on the self-proclaimed king of the cruise awaits Neville let's get 205 live started Lince Dorado bounces back from the loss of his cruiserweight championship with a victory over former number one contender Brian Kendrick Noam Dar defeats the Newest addition to the Cruiserweight division, Enzo Amore. And Grand Metalik picks up a triple threat victory over Akira Tozawa and Mustafa Ali. And now here we go with our episode 263 action. The real life WWE Cruiserweight Champion Neville taking on WITM's Cruiserweight Champion Andrew who has Andrew has decided that he will continue to rock the Super Saiyan haircut during his entrances that he debuted at No Mercy with the stakes high on 205 Live the first main event in the era of Triple H controlling 205 Live and trying to increase the ratings in order for 205 Live to avoid cancellation takes place now Andrew in his first match since becoming a, a Cruiserweight Champion for the fourth time takes on Neville in non-title action let's get underway We got one-on-one -on -one action coming your way next, King. It's the best. We have Neville against an imposing adversary. Oh, oh man, I can't wait to see these two go at it.
and here we go, and I did the opposite of what I thought I said it to. Andrew came to the ring with his normal hair and now has a Super Saiyan look, but whatever. This episode has been delayed by like 24 hours when I, from when I went, wanted to record it due to technical issues, so I'm not going to restart it here 21 minutes into the episode. skill, determination. And power. And we're watching human gridlock here. Andrew Number working five. the arm of Neville. <laughs> Andrew here. checking briefly before the match already has his momentum stacked three second, on his that way to becoming cruiserweight back. champion. Will Andrew be able to stack that momentum even more now that he is the cruiserweight champion? We know Andrew is pretty much unstoppable when he puts together a win streak and stacks up his momentum as high as it can go. He came into this match expecting a fight, and that's exactly what he's getting. I tell you, we knew this was going to be a close affair, but I don't think we expect... Elbow strike to, strike to the back of the head of Neville. Huge fury of strikes by Andrew to force Neville to the ropes, but Neville is able to reverse and force Andrew in the apron and punches him outside, and now urging Andrew to get right back up and come into the ring. what's going to happen. Only for Neville to decide to join him out there, utilizing, trying to utilize the outside to get some offense in this match. Reversal by Andrew. Now attacking the ankle of Neville. Andrew misses with a kick. Kick connects, stomp to the arm. Another stomp. Forces Neville up. Nothing fancy from him there. Big Neville DDT by Andrew. Face buster by Andrew. Irish rip the ring. back to the ring at seven. Not a lot of spring left in his step right now. Forces Neville up. And forearm. I think just barely missed Neville. Forces Neville to the top turnbuckle. You gotta move quicker than that. Reversal by Neville. Oh my gosh. You can practically see and a 450 right now. Thanks to that connects. Move off the ropes. Neville to the apron looking for a springboard maneuver. And he hits the drop kick. What impact. And drop kick. Connects. We're seeing some great high flying action here. It'd be a real shame if Vince were to cancel 205 Live and we did not get to witness high flying cruiserweight action like this anymore. Elbow strike to the head of Andrew. Not even sure that connected to the head of Andrew with all that hair. As your powers out at two. Neville is not someone to sleep Stomp on. to the back. There's another stomp. I'm wondering what's going now attacking the arm. Stomp to the arm. Forces Andrew up. Into a seated position. Reversal by Andrew. Since it's not a false count anywhere match, I'd have to agree with you. And what a move by Neville. Hopping over onto the apron behind Andrew and power bombing him to the outside. Impressive maneuver there by the self proclaimed king of the cruiserweights. And now a suplex on the outside. Stomp to the back of the head of Andrew. Forces Andrew up. Our shrimp forces Andrew onto the entrance ramp. This is not a no DQ match, but these two men have developed quite a rivalry. I don't think either of these men care. Andrew now getting fired up. Forces Neville up. Irish whip. Andrew falls, or rather Neville falls just short of the ring. Irish whip. Forces Neville back inside. Andrew would join him. Forces Neville up. Reversal by Neville. Reversal by Andrew. Reversal by Neville. 
He that move by Andrew. Huge GDT by Andrew. Forces Neville up well, into a seated position. Before. Headbutt. He's in full on Kick to the there. back. Stomp to the hip. Submission locked Submission in. Locked Hammer in. and chin lock. It's locked in well. Can we see Andrew get a submission victory here? Hey, Nearly does, but Neville is able to break the hole just in time. Andrew is able to reverse into a neck breaker. Reversal by Neville. And he fails to connect Andrew avoids the elbow strike. Second attempt connects. Now a big head scissors. Stomp to the arm of Andrew. Neville goes for cover. And Neville nearly gets a big non-title victory against Andrew. But Andrew's going to power out at two and a half. Neville looking to finish things here. Could be thinking Red Arrow. And indeed he is. It connects center ring. Red Arrow. And Neville is going to get a big non-title victory against the Cruiserweight Champion in his first non-title match. Right, so off of the red arrow finisher with the help of some impressive offense on the outside of the ring it's going to be Neville picking up a big non-title victory over the new cruiserweight champion Andrew in non-title action so let's get our results from 205 Live and see how that affects the rankings on 205 Live. First we'll check and see who took the fall in the triple threat match and it was Mustafa Ali with Akira Tozawa getting a no decision. Alright so Lince Dorado defeated Brian Kendrick to become the number one contender. Kendrick falls to number four. Mustafa Ali lost, however. And Noam Dar won, so Noam moves up to number three. Kendrick falls to number four. Or actually, that's just because Noam Dar won. That doesn't count their losses. So Ali falls to six. Kendrick falls to five. Noam, we already moved up Noam Dar, who defeated Enzo Amore. Enzo falls to number 15. Graham Metalik defeated Akira Tozawa. And Mustafa Ali, with Ali taking the fall. Metalik moves up to number six. 
We already moved down Ali and Tazawa remains at number two. And Neville pick up a non-title victory over Andrew. He can move up to number six. Grand Metalik one as well though. So he actually moves up to number five. Metalik to number six. And the top five contenders to the Cruiserweight Championship held by Andrew are number one, Lince Dorado. Number two, Akira Tozawa. Number three, Noam Dar. Number four, Aria Davari. And number five, Neville. Now we move on to Raw. Will we see the Intercontinental Champion Gerald in action? We will. He's pictured there with the rest of Raw's champions and randomly Mandy Rose. Gerald has made a complete recovery from his injuries and is ready to compete at full strength again. So Gerald is healed from his head injury that he was suffering from. And actually, while we're at it, we were talking about momentum earlier. So let's do what we I should be doing probably weekly and get a momentum and status effect check on the WITM4. We'll go in alphabetical order and start with Andrew. Despite taking a loss, he does still have the, mo the momentum stacked by three, increasing his momentum and, defeat and defensive attributes each by one, or each by three rather, increasing his overall from his base of 96 to 97. And Andrew is, of course, the Cruiserweight Champion. Next up, Corey. He had a week off the previous NXT, but he remains the number one contender to the NXT Championship. And he has his momentum stacked by two, increasing his momentum and defensive attributes each by two. Increasing his overall by one from 294 from his base of 93. Dalton Roush, the current number one contender to the WWE Championship, does not currently have any status effects. If he does win on SmackDown, however, not only will that secure him a spot in a WWE Championship match at Hell in a Cell in six days, but that will also should get him a status effect in time for that match. As for the Aaron Connell champion, Gerald, he has a mom momentum stacked by one, increasing his momentum and defensive attributes each by one. Not quite enough to increase his overall. But if he gets a win in the next episode, that may just happen. And who will Gerald be in action against? We get another matchup between two fierce rivals. Gerald and the man who caused him that head injury. The monster among men, Braun Strowman. The first two meetings between these two men were each classics and both of which w will be match of the year candidates in the WIT Emmy Awards coming up towards the end of the season. Will we have a third classic between these two men? We find out in episode 200. And 64. Until then, this is Corey signing off.